Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 601. Yes, yeah, starting a new century. Um, <laughs> topic today is ladies, don't settle or freeze. And I'm going to play with two different aspects in this and I'll get to that in a moment. Before I jump in too far, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do this stuff. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful and high achieving women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which led to these talks over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And so every day for the last, well, not every day since I started, but certainly for the majority of the time, I've been doing these talks every day, which is why I'm now at number 601. And the topic today is ladies, don't settle or freeze. So I'll just start with the second one first to talk about this, because I had a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday who spoke about a rather nasty interaction she had with this guy. And I'm going to springboard from that because I've got a feeling this is not unusual for people. Excuse me, not unusual for ladies especially because of a certain wiring dysfunction that happens. So in this situation, she was at a... Um, I, was, I, I want to be careful not to go too deep on this so that nobody get, gets outed, although he should be for what he did. Anyway, she was going to see this... Um, their physical health practitioner with that for the sake of argument and he was basically going to apply um, helping out with some um, I think it was I can't remember what I think it was like a magnetic device to sort of heal her with some stuff she's going through with her digestive system anyway he basically contrived to get her to be fully undressed which she didn't need to be and then he proceeded to actually t feel her up to put it in blunt terms and went as far as uh, uh, the way the way she described him was he basically went and head and like you know basically ran his fingers over her crotch and then licked the results and made some lewd comment to her. Now the thing is, for me, it's like immediate that that calls for like immediate like punch the guy out and walk away or do whatever it was. But she said she, in that situation she froze, and I want to speak to that part. The, the act has been being dealt with. The guy is going to lose his license, I'm sure. Um, He's been accused of other things too, including cheating and molesting other women as well. Anyway, but the point was this, is that what was the crux of this was in the moment of that happening, she froze up. She didn't react. She didn't respond. She didn't say anything. She just froze. And I know she's not alone. There are many women who have been caught in circumstances, particularly ones that involve sexual interaction or sexual innuendo, or even sexual assault, where they freeze because of a few things that I suspect are going on. One of which is, and this is the most overt, obvious thing, is they're afraid of possibly the guy becoming more violent, and I understand that one. But basically, if you can put a good knee in the guy's crutch, or you stick a thumb in his eye, he won't be attacking you. So that's one thing for self-defense, and I would definitely recommend ladies, if you're feeling that level of fear about men, take some self-defense classes for your own self-esteem and comfort yourself. Secondly, 90% of the reasons why people in situations like that, and I'm going to use people in general for this, this part of it, why they, they freeze up in situations that are more traumatic and challenging is because it's wired up from something that happened when they were a lot younger. This may come back around to the, the I'm just planning ahead, this might come back around to the why saddle piece, and I'm going to cover the saddle piece as well. But for a lot of people, in particular women I know especially, women carry a lot of pain and wounding from childhood that happens as part of the cultural upbringing that then plays out in their adult life without them having control over it, which is why they freeze in situations like that. Obviously, that's, sorry, that's the reason why some of them freeze some of the time in situations like that, because frankly, there is an absolute, um, I want to say straight line between actions, sorry, experiences that happen when they're younger and repeats of those in an adult life straight line connection so if you were uh, molested or sexually assaulted by an older brother or a, an older parent sorry an older adult relative uncle father grandfather whatever or neighbor that just that abusive behavior can be an underlying trigger that, or trigger response trigger that when you're in adult life, things that get close to that energetic will cause you to freeze because of the fear that comes up from when you were three, four, five years old. And I'm saying it this way to make a point. 
because all of us, people in general, and I've said this before, but I'll say it another way because this is so on my mind right now, tend to grow up without resolving what happened when we were young. We become adults and commit to life and think we've left everything behind us. But it isn't. It's inside of us. So it doesn't get left behind. It stays with us. And if you're somebody who's been carrying that around for a while, and you know that it's going on in there, and you think, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm an adult now, I can handle things differently. But if you get in circumstances that are threatening your comfort, your safety, your security, that may risk create a form of danger to you, particularly in that same vein as I mentioned, I can pretty much guarantee that you're going to freeze. Unless you've learned some lessons to do some sort of response that is ingrained, or better yet, you resolved the wound in the first place. The wound that happened when you're younger can, first of all, be healed because it's a memory that can be resolved. You can't wipe it out, you can numb it out, and a lot of people tend to suppress it because it's so traumatic, but unless you face it, deal with it, face it, deal with it, and release it, it will still govern your life. Basically, you're under the control of your history. In fact, your adult life is probably being run in relationships by a three-year-old. That's not very inspiring, is it? So if that's what's going on for you, get support, get help, get counsel, get guidance from somebody who can deal with the emotional package, the emotional baggage and the emotional upset that's still inside. That's one of my skill sets, by the way. Now, I want to cut across the other side for a moment. It might come back to join together. Again, this is, I'm not sure exactly because these are never scripted or planned. I have no bullet points to work from. But the settling piece is another part of that. Because the same as having those memories that are impinging upon your response and reaction to events when you're an adult because of things that happened when you were a child, so too do your choices you make as an adult, um, which is say the rules that you're running in your head to make your choices as an adult are also influenced by what happened when you were a child as well. If you were told by the adults around you negative things like you're not pretty enough, you're not attractive, you're ugly, you're not aligned, all these different things that are always never true, by the way, then you may be carrying those along subconsciously as an adult. And again, same as the stuff with abusive behaviors, those things get stuck in your head as well. So as an adult, your dating life may be impinged upon where you don't feel confident to go meet somebody that really is where you should be meeting at the level of quality of relationship, but you're settling for less than that because you don't think you deserve it because of the programming that happened when you were younger. Same thing again. Straight line from what happened when you were younger to what happens as an adult, it's a straight line of wiring. And until you resolve it, it'll keep happening and repeating. It's not pretty talk, I know, but I want to make sure you get this because I'm really clear that I want to make this point. Well, thank you, Sue. I appreciate that. Yes, it is a good one. I want to get this point because it's so vital for you to understand that until you resolve the imprints from your child, you won't be free of them. They don't go away on their own. You don't mature beyond them. They still hang out and do their, do their um, function. Now, I'm going to speak a little bit more about that in a second. By the way, quick sidebar. This is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering who I was talking to just then. Somebody commented on the screen and Facebook Live. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll get to that at the end where you find the links. That's the difference. So this is a Facebook Live. So one of the things that we'll talk about is the wiring we take on. We create a construct of the world, the way the world works, including relationships and interaction with people, by the way that we watch the world when we're very young, up until about the age of five. I've talked about this before. This actually is a part of uh, Bruce Lipton's work. If you read The Biology of Belief, a book he wrote years ago, very insightful, very on point about how we physiologically take on truth and actually not take on truth, take on falsehood and take on beliefs based upon what we experience when we're very young and it goes into the subconscious and we're still carrying it as an adult. And the thing about it, subconscious is, it don't go away. And to make it worse, our subconscious is about 100, 250, 150, 200, 500, 1,000 times more powerful than our conscious mind. So it runs underneath, which is the thing. Hi, Fernando, nice to see you in my broadcast. Yeah, this is, this is a lot of um, what's going on for people. So thank, you're welcome for me touching on this. Uh, great topic. I think a lot of people can relate. Amazing video. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now. If this, if this applies to you, again, I'm going to put some links in the comments at the back end so you can reach out to me and have a discovery session because, frankly, you don't want to keep Karen's baggage around. So, back on track. The wiring we are taking on is, I'm, trying to use, I'm looking for an analogy, I'm reaching for one, if I can find one that fits this. It's basically like autopilot, best way I can put it. If you know in your car you have cruise control, or if you've got a modern car, you may have autopilot in the car, which basically lets you stay on track. 
that's great, except the problem is with that is that in your consciousness, you don't have the ability to grab hold of the steering wheel. So imagine being in a car that's an autopilot where you don't have control over the car at all. And maybe it doesn't have all the latest features where it will auto stop, it will just roll straight into another car. How painful would that be? If you, if you couldn't control the car because the autopilot took over and you didn't have control. That's the same thing that happens with your subconscious mind. Because you may say as an adult, what I want is this, 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 and this on one side of the equation. What the subconscious mind is doing is going, I'm familiar with this, I'm used to this, I need this to be remembering what it feels like. That is the split that happens, which keeps you from getting what you want. And if you've been wondering why your relationships haven't worked out the way you wanted, this is one of the main reasons why. And I'll make sure this point is clear. I was looking to do, I was thinking about doing a very uplifting, positive one. I knew this wasn't, wasn't going to be, but I knew I had to talk about it because it's important. If you're starting your New Year's resolutions, because it is January still, and feeling that you don't have a track record of great relationships, you want to set up a new relationship paradigm this year, it won't happen on its own, unfortunately. It's not, a mag it's not like a magical wish. You say, I wish I can have a great relationship and it will suddenly transform and happen. The old paradigm, the old recordings, the old beliefs are still going to run in your consciousness. So your personal life, your programming, and your beliefs are all governed from what happened when you were younger. Now, for some people, a very, very small part of the population, their upbringing was perfect, in quotes. It was nice, it was safe, it was comfortable, and they were raised in a very honorable, wonderful, respectful, loving environment. There are people out there like that. I'm close to that, but not that myself, but a lot, of people are, a lot of people aren't close to that. For them, as an adult, their life may come a lot easier because they don't have anything to work on. Except, as human beings, we have a bad habit of picking out the bad stuff and making that the truth. Ain't the way to do it. But again, you're making decisions as an adult that a five-year-old made. And that's the limitation. It frees you, stops you from having what you want. If you've had relationships that have failed and ended badly, it may not be your fault necessarily, but it may be your responsibility to change the wiring. And this is the point thing I want to make clear. If you look back at your past relationships, you'll be able to see, ideally, if you can look through a neutral, or I should say a um, detached viewpoint, to look at things as they actually happened versus the way you think they should have happened, and look at the past relationships and look for the common threads. If there's two or three strong relationships where the same dysfunction happened or the breakup was caused by, you'll recognize if you see it. I can guarantee you, yes, I can guarantee you this, although there's no exchange going on, so you can do with it what you wish. If you find something like that as your past two or three relationships, if you track back to your childhood, you may notice there's a resonance there of a similar or familiar or a common experience that matches what's happening now. Because again, five-year-olds running your adult life. Isn't that fun? To share with you my own example that happened for me in my early teens and 20s, when I was in my own dating explorations, because I was very new at this at the time, I would date, in, I fall in love with relationships that were wonderful initially, but they would end after about three months, four months, for the same reason. My partner and I would have a difference of opinion. She would, we'd get in an argument, and I would shut down and leave. It wasn't I was afraid of arguments. That wasn't it. But the truth was that happened every single time. And when I, fought, when I looked back at my childhood, and I had a chance to review this and look at this from a different lens, I saw that I was raised in a family where I don't have any memory of my parents ever arguing. Now, it sounds perfect. I was raised in basically a very conservative, reserved English background, a Jewish English background. So emotional expression wasn't some part of the conversation. We were very stoic and very reserved. So arguing would be emotional in the investment, and we didn't have that. <laughs> so our, our family dynamic was one where we just didn't have arguments. We just would like, we'd basically sulk. <laughs> that would happen a bit more. But basically what happened was the wiring I had to taken on from when I was a child, in, printed very early on, was that in my family, loving did not include arguments. That's the way it was, because I didn't have experience of arguments growing up. Fast forward to my adult life, and I said I had these relationships that would end with an argument, is because the wiring inside of me dictated, dictated, without my control, that I couldn't be in a relationship with somebody if there was an argument, because the arguments didn't equal love in my, in my mindset. My programming was such that love and arguments didn't fit in the same equation. In fact, love plus arguments makes no relationship. That was the wiring I had. By the way, I was a computer programmer in my early 20s, so I was thinking that way. Now, looking back, I see the way I can see through people's patterns because I can see the logic working dysfunctionally. 
And that's one reason I'm grateful I got to figure that out and why I help my clients with that. So I hope this is making sense to you. We are exquisitely perfectly programmed, excuse me, exquisitely perfectly wired to take on programming as a younger younger age that will carry on automatically without thinking about it. Because again, it's autopilot, it's subconscious. It's in that safe place that we'll never get messed with until we choose to change it. That will govern our life forever. Unless you get some help, some guidance, some support from somebody who can help you dig into that place safely, unpack those wiring beliefs, those programs that you had in there from childhood and the emotional baggage that goes with it and resolve it once and for all. That's my work. Yes, I'm a relationship attraction expert. Yes, I help my clients attract amazing relationships and wonderful things. But the reality is, before that can really happen, I, ha I help them go through that place of resolving and healing the past. Because if you want to be free to love the re relationship you really want, to attract the relationship you really want, to be in the right place at the right time to get what you really want, you must, you must resolve your past. I, there's no way around it. I can give you the gave me the perfect relationship, you go to matchmaker, dating service, apps, whatever you want to go through and meet the right person. I can guarantee you, again, guarantees are all over the place today. Doesn't matter what they may look like or may they appear like or their profile or whatever you're reading, a few months, a few years, a few weeks into that relationship, the same thing's gonna happen that happened before because your life has been programmed that way by what you learned when you were younger. If you wanna change it, I recommend you get help. And I'm going to put the link in the comments for a discovery session because if that's something you're dealing with, I know I can help you with that. I think I've belabored the point long enough. So quick sidebar to the um, settling piece too. If your, relationship, if your relationship choices, you're not choosing high enough, you feel like you could choose better, but you don't feel comfortable doing that, you don't feel confident enough, you don't feel you can have what you really want, that's a good reason to talk too because the same thing's happening with the wirings I mentioned before. That the wiring happened when you were younger is impacting your adult life because it's still programming you to believe a certain thing. And if you were told when you're young you don't deserve it, you may still be running that truth, which is inaccurate. Excuse me, you may be running that belief, which is not truth, which is inaccurate as an adult. And that is another reason to get some support in this. By the way, it also applies to careers and housing and health and all sorts of things too, because we take into programming for everything in life, not just relationships. But my speciality is about relationships, so I want to make sure you got that point. Um, there was one other thing that was in the back of my mind about that, about settling. It must have gone. If it comes back, it comes back. I'll put it in the comments later on. And by the way, if you have any thoughts and questions about this topic, you can put it in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. I'll give you the links for those in a moment. Again, I'm offering a discovery session as my gift to you. It's a complimentary um, invitation to a conversation. We sit down and talk by phone or in person if you're local, and we can see where you are and where you want to go. I can promise you that I'll give you some guidance and I will most likely recommend working with me if it lines up for you and me. But I'll get you started at least. So thank you for watching and being with me on this. This is one of those juicy topics. It isn't fun, but it's extremely powerful and it frees you completely when you get through it. So that's the good news about this. It's not a pit you know get out of it. It's a way you go through to the other side and become free, able to love fully and attract what you really want, which is also my speciality. <laughs> So with that, thank you for watching. Um, replays, quickly reminder, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, number 601 today. Um, I do this every day at the same time on Facebook, which is my personal page, which if you know the link for that is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. If you want to watch the replays on Facebook, I keep them on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. Please uh, like the page as well, by the way. And if you want to watch this on YouTube, which you may be watching on now, I have a playlist called Messages for the Masculine on my channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel, again, Barry Selby. And you can watch all of them there. And I'm also building up my podcast slowly, which has the replays of this in audio format. And that under iTunes is Messages for the Masculine, which you can also subscribe to. And you can also download the audios, and listen to them whenever you want. So there'll be links in the comments when I sign off. I'll, get, I'll put them in shortly. And I recommend highly that you step into getting what you want. If you, want to put up, if you don't want to put up with the crap you've been having, if that's what you've been having, this may be a help, maybe a step in the right direction. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, I will be back in tomorrow, number 602. And I'm not sure yet what's going to, I don't know what the new topic's going to be yet. It's something that's brewing. And sometimes it shows up before 5 p.m. <laughs> if it doesn't, it gets postponed. But I hope it's been of value to you. Um, I'm here to support you. It's my heart's calling. It's my passion, my work, my choice, and my service. So don't sit there and think you can't have the help. 
if you deserve it you can get it and that's what I'm here to do so um, I think this talks inspired enough conversation for you and enough thoughts for you I'm not going to give you any homework because this may have already stirred up your stuff but I will see you again tomorrow at the same time same channel 5 p.m. Pacific time I invite you to join me then and uh, thank you for watching take care of yourselves bye